Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back to another episode of our Total War Warhammer 2 Let's Play as the Hunter Marcus Wolfhart in the Hunter and the Beast DLC. This is a very crucial episode for us as we might finally make some decent progress against the Blue Vipers. But before we get into that, we have a bit of a battle to fight over here, folks, and we're going to kick things off with the Battle of Snide's Head. A little bit of action to start things, and then we can deal with all of your comments and suggestions and thoughts, as well as some of the administrative stuff that we have to take care of. But first things first, let's take back our city, shall we? Alright folks, it is a choke point battle, which if uh, we work based off of previous experiences, tells us that the uh, orcs are likely going to cross the bridges and the land bridges and attack us, because that's the greenskin way, let's be honest. So we should deploy ourselves in a way that will allow us to defend our position uh, with minimal obstruction and minimal issues, and hopefully far away from trees as well, because I hate fighting in the trees. So let's go ahead and deploy over here, and as I do, I want to mention a couple of really quick things. As always, folks, if you've been enjoying this series and you would like to see it continue, please don't hesitate to keep letting me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. It does make a very big difference in how I approach content on the channel. Uh, it just, I look at the like counts and the comment counts after every episode to try and see and understand how much interest remains for a certain series before I continue it. Uh, so it's always very helpful in that regard. And on top of that, I do really enjoy reading through the comments. Uh, lots of interesting thoughts, jokes, you know, <laughs> insights and things like that uh, often found in the comments. So I thoroughly enjoy that. And plus, I enjoy getting your name suggestions in as well. So this session, smooth segue as I say, hey, leave a like and a comment down below. Onwards to, if you have any name suggestions for units, make sure you leave those in the comments down below. Onwards to, the reason why I haven't got any new name suggestions implemented today. Uh, this battle that we're about to fight is likely going to cost many a good Imperial life. And I need to be ready for, uh, for that. So I don't wish to grieve lost named units so quickly after giving them names and i'm sure many of you agree it's not always fun to uh spend time you know coming up with unit names and whatnot uh and then submitting them and then hoping they'll get implemented seeing them get implemented and all of a sudden uh the unit dies within five minutes of of even existing ex existing you know what i mean so uh with that in mind and with the fact that this battle is going to be pretty hefty and deadly in mind i haven't applied any names today uh, we'll probably do it for the next session. Hopefully you guys don't mind that. But yes, do please keep them coming. I thoroughly enjoy uh, adding unit name suggestions into my campaigns because I feel like it, it just adds an extra layer of fun and uh, involvement, uh, in my opinion at least, in my opinion. Let's go ahead and put these guys over here as well. Cavalry heavy on this side, uh, but sure, why not? Sure, why not? Let's see. Are we all set up? You swap you around. Uh, one thing to keep in mind about Marcus is that he now has not only the Tormentor Sword, which reduces melee attack and prevents enemies from moving, but he's also got Van Horseman Speculum, which reduces uh, melee defense, weapon damage, and melee attack from the enemy as well. So he kind of capable in melee, or he can at least help soldiers in melee. So just got to keep those in mind as well. There are infinite uses, but 90 second cooldown on both of them. So just got to make sure we're using them well, maybe even engaging enemy commanders uh, with Marcus in melee, though. That's obviously, you know, not, not ideal, but still an option. I feel like this is a good spot. This is, this is decent positioning. I feel like we're, I feel like we're ready. Let's, uh, let's begin. Oh my god. They outnumber us rather heftily, and boy does it look like it. Looks like they're bumping up and moving towards us, fair enough. Lots of archers on this side, kind of regret my cavalry placement now. Though they do have Savage Orc Boar Boy Biggins, it looks like, as well as Savage Orc Boar Boys, so, eh, you know. Oh no, they have Savage Orc Biggins as well, right? A well, fair, fair bit of anti-large, I don't know, this is kind of a scary, scary battle if I'm completely honest. Gonna try and stay on top of it all. Uh, I'm gonna try and stay on top of my micro. My micro in, in Warhammer 2 for some reason is a lot worse than my micro in Three Kingdoms, and I'm very curious to try and figure out why that might be the case. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 off m many times. It uh, does me a disservice. Let's put it that way. What's the range on the Arrow of Kronos? 600 meters. Can we? You know what? Why don't we kick things off with a little bit of love over here? Those Savage Rook Biggins, why not? Why not, right? They're nicely clumped up. Maybe we'll do a fair bit of damage. Sure, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take every little bit I can. 
a little bit of damage to these uh, error boys as well. It looks like this secondary army is almost forming up before it decides to move towards me, which is either a good thing because it buys me some time, or it's a terrible thing because it means they have units in reserve. I don't know how I feel about it just quite yet, but they are moving towards us. Uh, we are the attacker, so the time limit's on us. Not that we're ever going to get there. <laughs> I hope this isn't a 60-minute battle. Oh, God. I should really reduce that to 20 minutes, shouldn't I? For my uh, Let's Plays, at least. Sitting pretty, sitting tight. Not wanting to get too aggressive. Yeah, let them come to us. Let them climb this little mound over here. Get tired as they do so. Fire at them as they come at us. Uh, and hopefully our spear positioning, actually, is also good for dealing with their cavalry if it decides to get adventurous. And our cav is all the way over here. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know how I feel. <laughs> I don't know how I feel. We might actually be able to get another strike with the Arrow of Kronos before they even meet us in uh, in battle. They're still getting into position, it looks like. Where do we drop the next set? Over here. And those Savage Orcs being so heavily ranked up is terrifying. Maybe over here. They're nicely clumped up. There are definitely better angles to fire the thing from, but... Let's do it. Why not? Chances are otherwise I'll just not get a chance to use it at all. There we go. Hey, you know what? Not terrible. <laughs> not terrible. Alright, alright. How are we looking? These guys are still kind of sitting back there. They're gonna get aggressive though, you know it. As soon as lines start to meet, all hell's gonna break loose. Not a fair bit of hurt there, though. 69 seconds for the next one. I mean, it's going to be a while before they get within range. But we have a, I mean, we have a fair bit of range. We can hopefully shut down their range pretty swiftly. Their error boys and stuff back there as well. We've got a fair bit of cavalry we can send in. Mm. Wondering how I want to position some of these units. I wish I had more range. 40 seconds. Now nah, we're not going to get another shot out before lines meet, I don't think. But, that magical ammunition, we can get a little bit of damage done as they come closer. They're creeping through the woods right now. As soon as they become visible, we need to start firing away. Or as soon as they get within range. And it looks like it's going to be any second now. Go for it. Archers can almost fire. Marcus, you can fire over here. Go for it. Feels like a waste against, uh, terror boys who will probably melt away to our ranged fire. Which is coming in right now. There we go. Stuff, have they... No, they're not coming towards us just yet. Okay, good work. Fire back there. Get you to pop this shot over... Here, let's go. Okay, firing away. Still have been spotted here somehow. There we go, speak of the devil. That wasn't as good a hit. Oh, you know what? That was actually pretty decent. Go, let's go, let's go. And some shots up there. Fire up over here. Pull you back, get you to fire over here. Marcus, fire over here. Do we put the cavalry back or... Oh yeah, these guys are in trouble. Those savage are biggins. Get you to fire up over here. Firing up over here as well. I'm pretty well over here. These guys are being chased off. Good stuff. Archers fire over here, please. Let's get these guys off as well. Turn you guys around. Pull you away. Let's go. Pull you away as well. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Go out of here. How are we doing? Firing up over there. Good stuff. Firing way back over here. Let's fire over here. Okay. Firing over here. It's okay. They're charging over here. Do that. Go ahead and get a rear charge over here. We're firing away up there. Firing away over here. Good stuff. Chase. Looks like they're coming towards us now. Good work. Good work. Are we going to get a good charge in here? Maybe. Yeah, you know what? That was alright. Still firing away. Get you up over there. Arcus, fire over here. Done well there. Alright, form up over here. Turn you guys around. Turn you around to fire up there. Lara, fire over here. How are we doing? Mm, these guys are pretty badly hurt. Should have taken more care of them. 
Should have taken a lot more care of him, actually. Oh, these guys are gonna drop right, right. You're gonna drop right. Give up. Firing over there. Get you firing over here. Pour me up again. All right, all right. Fair enough. This is not so good. I can get some charges in over there. Get these guys off if they're able to close up again. Oh, come on. That's all we did? Oh, let's pull back. Those, uh... Cavalry units are coming in. Hot. Pull back. Pull back. Hold the line over there. You out of there. Firing over here. Okay, here they come. Fire up there. Marcus, let's get you over here, please. How are you doing over here? Good. Scared them off. Get you forming up over here. Get you the hell out of there. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Charging there, maybe. Fire over here. Pull back, pull back, pull back. Get out of there. Alright, we're firing over here. Hopefully we're gonna drop these guys pretty soon. Keep firing. Alara. Um, oh, too far away. Way too far away. Get you firing over here, Marcus. Let's go. Holding the line, trying to at least get you guys around the side there. Firing away, shattering some of these units. Good stuff. Firing over here. Firing over there. Scare those guys off. Hold the line over here. Fire. Fire. Hold them in place. Buddy's coming towards us as well. Okay, they're taking damage. These guys are being thrown back. Charge up over here. Good stuff, good stuff. Fire at these Savage Orc Error Boys. Firing way back there. Fire up over here. Fire up over here. Let's go. Holding the line ish. Get you to charge up there. Let's get you up over here and around. Let's go. Okay, good stuff. Let's send you. Oh, let's pull you back, actually. Our cavalry is not doing anything. I need to use my cavalry a bit more actively. Let's go. Fire over here. Let's go. Let's do it. Marcus, you're doing okay? No, let's dive in there. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Send you. Up this way. Though they are biggins, I need to be careful there. Alright, let's get you to turn around. Oh, fire over here. Fire up there, please. Get you guys firing up there as well. Get you firing. Oh, let's pull you back. Pull you back as well. Let's go. Fire over here. Let's go. Good stuff. How are we doing? These guys are coming back. There's a problem. We're firing over here as well. Go ahead and pop this. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Get in there, buddy. You're good up there. Let's go ahead and fire over there. These guys are being scared off. Excellent. You fire up here. Let's get you firing back here. Let's go. We're holding the line. Oh, these guys are going to drop. Hold them back. Turn you around and fire up there, please. Let's go. Marcus, how you doing? How are you doing? Not that hot. Push. Buy it. We might lose this unit over here. I'd very much like not to, but it's like it's gonna happen. Holding the line, holding the line. Get you to fire over here, get you to push in over here. Looks like, oh, hey, you know what? We might have this. Oh my god, we do. Oh my god, we do. Oh my god. We did lose those Empire Knights. Now, they might have just run off. Is a possibility. They may have just run off, or we may have lost them. Which would have been quite unfortunate. And honestly, I'm a little, uh... Disappointed in the overall performance. However, to be fair, to be fair, there was a lot of anti-large cavalry that I wasn't really positioned to. I'm just making excuses for myself. Let's end that battle. Close victory. I'll take it. Snide's head is ours once more. And looks like they survived. And you know what? Perhaps fittingly, the one that's hurt the most is the one that did the most uh, with 80 kills. But look at some of these kill counts over here. 122 on these crossbows. 116 over here. 133 on uh, Kalara. Happy with some of those opening salvos with her... Uh, Arrow of Kurnos, that was trophy for the pleasing. These guys, they're not dead. Hard to tell. Looks gray. Uh, but not that gray. Not this black and white. Okay, only lost 500, less than 560. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say, go ahead and say I'm satisfied with how that went. Simply occupy it and watch. Even though we're just taking back what's rightfully ours. Oh. <laughs> oh, we're so screwed.
So one of the comments actually that I wanted to address is, uh, I, I forget the exact phrasing, but it was along the lines of, oh yeah, problem secured. Let's go ahead and let, let's go ahead and deal with this stuff real quick. First hostility increased, problem secured. Good job. We got Hunter as well, which is kind of ironic. Let's go ahead and get ourselves the public order bump over here because we're going to need it. We're going to need it. Um, so uh, w one of the comments that really stood out to me was with regards to the difficulty of this campaign and how uh, it's a little over the top. I don't know if I already addressed that during the battle. Maybe I was thinking about addressing it, but I didn't. Uh, however, just to, to kind of hi highlight it, with higher difficulties, it's already a pain where public order takes a negative hit, like difficulty level negative four, just because I'm playing on very hard. To add on top of that additional public order penalties as hostility goes up, in my opinion, is just... I don't know. It's a bit much. It feels like a cheap way to make the campaign harder. I've never liked... Uh, you know, higher difficulties doing things like these little number debuffs. I've never liked that. Um, so yeah, it's and, and yes, you're very much right in the comments in saying that the easier difficulties end up being a little too easy for me, which is why I tend to avoid them. But then at the same time, I pay the price of these higher difficulties being, well, for lack of a better word, stupid sometimes. Just straight up dumb. <laughs> uh, no other way to put it. Now, that's one thing taken care of. I've already mentioned why I haven't got name suggestions implemented. Let's go ahead and take care of some other things. So first of all, uh, what we're going to do today is, as we're replenishing in this army, uh, which will take two turns, I suppose, uh, at most, which is good because what I want to do is I want to send Kalara uh, down to the uh, northern spine of Sotek. As many of you have said, I'm, I'm very well aware that I don't have to send my entire army to the northern spine of Sotek or to Slanhuapek. Uh, I can just uh, send any character, as it says, move a character, uh, move a character, move any character. Hmm. Oh, that's a weird discrepancy to have. But yeah, so we're going to get Kalara uh, to come down here, and as some of you suggested, it, we're going to send Ubel, Voin, U Ubel von Liebwitz over to Schlanhuapek. Uh, I feel like a broken record. Uh, I'm having a serious sense of deja vu. Uh, we're going to send him down to Slanhuapek to try and get our other mysterious... Uh, hero hunter over here see see who he is an exceptional individual indeed um we need a name suggestion for ubel by the way so feel free to drop one of those in the comments as well as we make our way down south now the price we'll pay for pulling buddy away is uh, we're gonna stop fighting corruption for a moment or two which uh i don't like but it'll only be for a couple of turns we have to go down this way because of the roads and all uh, rather than going you know across this way it's fine it's fine We'll be able to fight that corruption soon enough. Uh, I'm wondering, actually, if we want to go ahead and upgrade this. We've got a fair bit of money, a couple of options for what we might want to do. Fort Prosper at least has its walls and stuff set up. Mm. Snide's head. Wondering if we dismantle this. Let's see, if we upgrade Snide's head... We'll be able to get walls over here. Once this is done, we'll be able to get the uh, uh, first step of the walls, at least. For both of these guys, so that's that's fair. I don't mind that. Lara's going to go down here and get ourselves a new hunter. You're moving this way to get us a new hunter. We have some money. We don't have that much money. Okay. Hmm. We don't have a ton of money. We certainly don't have enough for another army. I would like to get another army sometime soon. Now, there is some money to be made over here from the gemstones at Spectazuma. Uh, so that's definitely something I want to rush towards. That was the plan anyway. Some of you also suggested that maybe I send our friend here, Von Liebwitz, uh, down to discover the High Elves, to go find them, because uh, they might be a good trading partner, which, you know, maybe, maybe. Uh, I, I don't, I don't... Uh, I think that's probably a good idea. I just also have to keep in mind and, and, and be mindful of this corruption situation until I'm able to declare war on and eliminate the Vampire Coast Mutineers. However, I'm starting to feel like that was the turn here. Um, I have a little bit of money to spend. I'm just wondering if I want to spend it or if I want to uh, set it aside. Because we'll likely want to build two of these. 1,500 times two, we need 3,000 at the start of the next... Or we need 1,500 at the start of the next turn. Okay. What else What I might want to... Might I want to build? 5,000... Maybe we do save out... Sa save up. Just a touch. Because in that way we can upgrade Wolfheart's Landing's uh, city defenses at the same time as get 
Snide's Head, or rather the Temple of Sigmar building uh, its uh, its gatehouse and stuff. Sure, sure, that sounds like the right call. So I do think that's going to be the turn, and uh, we'll just accumulate a little bit of money, take spec to Zuma hopefully in the next couple of turns. Over here I would like to do a little bit of merging. I think these two units can perhaps merge. I'm having a very hard time nailing the composition for this army. Um, merge you two. The reason why I want to do that is because Kalara is going to go down here. We're going to get another hunter, and we're going to put both of those hunters back in here. So Kalara, as well as the new one, the mystery man, uh, and that'll be our 20 stack, which is why I wanted to do that merge. I don't want to merge the Empire Knights because we have to you know, wait for a lot of construction or for Imperial supplies to arrive. The other thing that I've been thinking of is, well, we don't have to use Imperial supplies right away, but I would like to get another army out soon so that we can fill it up with Imperial supplies. So I have to think about what I want the Imperial supplies to be for that army as well. I wouldn't mind this army uh, becoming a bit more of a uh, run and gun type, like if we can get some war wagons with the mortars or something like that, perhaps. Um, I also have regiments of renown available so I could rather swiftly recruit a second army. It's just a matter of having that uh, per turn income, I suppose, that's holding me back. Hmm. Gotta find the gap when it comes time for these uh, Imperial supplies to arrive and what gap we want to fill. I might just go with infantry so we have some great swords or something in, in the, the upcoming second army. Because this army is performing all right, I would say. Not perfect, but all right. Uh, let's go ahead and hit that enter and see what the AI does. Hopefully our New World Colony allies up there will make some progress. Hopefully they'll just burn that settlement down, because I want it for myself. Uh, I just want their help in, you know, taking... taking the Blue Vipers out of the equation, maybe drawing their aggro up north a little bit. I could have used that help a lot earlier. The Drowned are so pitiful and weak. I've defeated two of their armies, I believe it was. I believe it's been, rather. Which, thank God. I, I, I kid you not, I wouldn't be surprised if I end up losing this campaign. <laughs> no World Colonies, come on, make your moves. Are you seriously being cowards right now? Ah. Uh, okay. I see. <laughs> I see, I see. Fair enough. Right of Primeval Glory, don't care. Lizard men doing lizard things. So, Kalara, you can come down here and maybe even get all the way back in the same... Oh, you can. Alright, so let's pop you down to here. Out. Oh, a mystery man has joined us. <laughs> uh, Yorick Grimm joins the expedition, and I assume it's a soft J. It's a y Yorick. Correct me if I'm wrong. Finally, contact was made with the spine of Sotek dwarfs. They are a strange lot, and it took quite some time for you to convince them your intentions were not belligerent. Once you described who you were seeking, the throng's leader told you it sounded very much like the master engineer Yorick Grimm, a secretive dwarf who has spent long periods of time outside their hold. It was unclear to his kin what Yorick was doing to, on his forays, nor did they bother to ask. After being introduced to Yorick, he agreed to join your cause, but something tells you this eccentric dwarf's services may cost you a little more than a mercenary's reckoning. Fair enough. Yorick, ooh, mandate progressed. Oh, wonderful. The expedition has increased its level of acclaim, making great strides towards fulfilling the Emperor's mandate. You will now receive better quality Imperial supplies. Continue garnering acclaim to advance the expedition's progress and further the Imperial cause. Absolutely, for Sigmar. Uh, wonderful. Unlocks construction of barracks and livery? 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 Livery buildings? Livery? I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but what it means is we can finally build the barracks, which means that with the armory, we can actually get Great swords coming out, so uh, it's something to consider. Definitely something to consider. Let's go ahead and get, for one, over here, this going, because we know that's happening. Uh, this last slot, I might save for... I'm trying to figure out here, right? Because, obviously, Temple of Sigmar and Snide's Head is where we should build the uh, armory and the barracks, so we might want to actually get rid of the rally field over here. The only reason I kept it was because I figured that we might want to recruit some of these units, but I guess not. Because what we're going to do is we're going to send Kalara back into this army. Yep, training. And we're going to get Yorick Grimm into this army as well. Increases mobility. Beautiful. And there's our 20 stack, right? Our replenishment rate is solid as well. Um, so we'll take a look at Yorick in a second. But first... So what I'm thinking is, do we want to build this? 1500? Tempting. 
The other option is, of course, I was saying that we save up to build this upgrade. As, as I always say, one of my biggest follies is leaving cities behind without uh, proper garrisons and whatnot, and proper walls, so perhaps yes. <laughs> perhaps yes. Okay. Every last beat. So now, so that the things, things have changed a little bit now, right? Because we can get, in several turns, we can get great swords of our own. Because we can do that, maybe the next time the Imperial Supplies come through, we don't go for the infantry line, uh, because we can supplement it ourselves. We can build it ourselves, rather. So, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, upgrading this, not a necessity. Let's see, if I do it, then we end up with three... Okay, no. Leave it be for now. Leave it be for now. I, 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 Something gut feeling says I should focus on upgrading this ASAP, so I'm going to go with that gut feeling. Marcus, uh, Marcus can sit pretty, can stay still for a little bit uh, before we move forward, and I think that's another turn. No, 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 it's not, because Buddy here. Yes. Now, another thing I can do, and many of you pointed this out, is rather than, you know, try to get my economy into a good position, I should uh, go Marcus, raiding or perhaps involving myself in these encounters at sea, such as the Skull Reefs, to make enough money so that I can sustain an army at a deficit without too much trouble. Not a bad idea. Might actually want to do that. Might actually want to do that. But of course, uh, Marcus right now is on a bit of a mission. Uh, gonna push into Spectazuma soon. So not gonna get distracted by this Skull Reef just yet. Oh, how do I get on it? Okay, so that's that's about where we want to be. Let's get you up to here. And I think next turn, yeah. Next turn we'll be able to get in there and we'll have yet another hero join us, join our cause, and then we can dive on in. So let's take a look at Yorick Grim real quick over here before we hit and turn, uh, and a couple other things, a little bit of other management I need to do. So, Yorick. Missile damage, 334, with armor piercing. A hefty bit of armor piercing as well. Pretty interesting. Weapon strength is alright, armor piercing as well. Melee attack, melee his, me his melee stats are all right. They're, he's not that great. He's not supposed to be primarily used in melee, so uh, keep him at a distance. But this entrenchment ability I find pretty interesting. Gives physical resistance, plus 22% and an increase to armor-piercing missile damage to one of your allies or to, you know, Yorick himself uh, at the cost of movement. That's a pretty cool bit of help for someone like, say, Marcus. Uh, or, you know, Yorick himself as well. Because these guys are not incapable in melee. So to get that extra bit of armor-piercing damage out while also having physical resistance, even if you get caught up in melee, it's not the end of the world. So, pretty pretty cool ability over there. Apart from that, we got standardized. We got all this kind of standard standard stuff over here. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Might take a look at that. Um, fair enough. But he's in here now with Kalara. Another thing I wanted to look at actually was stuff. I don't think we have stuff to give around or to hand out. We can give you the Ogre Blade. Sure, I suppose that's fitting. Though eventually he'll have his own quest stuff, I suppose. That does get you that obsidian lodestone for even extra magic resistance. You dwarf you. And sure, camp follower, why not? That's, uh, none of that really matters. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at... Kalara, I believe, has stuff already. Oops. Yeah, Clara's, Clara's already got her stuff. She's got Dawn as well. Don't really need to give her any of this stuff. Fair enough. Uh, I did want to take a look at Ubo. Let's see. No armor to give you, no hand weapon to give you, no talisman to give you, no enchanted items. We could perhaps give you... A little point. Nope, nothing to, nothing to hand off over here. That is something I need to stay on top of more, is handing out these uh, ancillaries and stuff. Ugh, where are you gonna go? Hopefully that's their only army. Strength rank 24. I feel like they have a second one. I feel like they have a second one, and I would love to ambush it. On the hunt! That's the turn, though, folks, I think. Marcus Wolfhart. Yep, that's the turn. Okay, sorry. Very hesitant. This uh, campaign makes me nervous. <laughs> Every little step makes me super nervous. But if we can move next turn... Maybe we should have moved a little bit this turn. But next turn, we can definitely move towards Spectazuma. We want to be cautious. We want to get aggressive to the point of maybe in the next two turns we can take that city. Uh, but we don't want to find ourselves in a position where we force marched and then turns out that out of thin air, the Blue Vipers uh, managed to recruit two armies and now we're screwed. <laughs> what did I say about thin air? Huh? What did I say? Oh my god. How are they sustaining those armies? I'd love to know. Ooh, the migration. 
A great migration comes to our borders, demanding shelter from larger threats abroad. Do we let them cross into our territory or turn them away? Uh, do nothing or welcome them. Growth, public order reduction, recruitment cost reduction. And growth is very helpful. That public order is going to trigger some serious rebellions, so be gone! I have no room for you. Our people are plenty upset already. Oh my god. So silly. Um, okay, hold on. Who would I remove next is the question. Well, for now, I suppose we could move first. We are very close to being able to strike. We're just short of being able to strike, it seems. Indeed. Indeed. Hmm. Okay, well, first of all, why not? Let's get Ubel crossing over. I believe we just have to go, yep, a little bit. Literally just over to here. Boom. There it is. Roderick joins the expedition. Once you'd brought your forces to mists surrounding the temple city of Shlanhua Peck, it did not take long for the Bretonian swordsman to arrive at your camp. He revealed himself as being no mere soldier, but in fact a noble by the name of Roderick Langui, who'd seen his entire retinue slaughtered whilst on an expedition into Lustria. With the massacre of his men, Roderick was now without an army or indeed a purpose. With a vengeful tone in his voice, he told you he was willing to offer his knowledge of Slanhua Peck, Slanhua Peck's defenses to enable a successful siege by your force, which, of course, you accepted. Very well, let's take a look at, uh, so Yorick Grimm wants me to obtain access to iron and timber, of course, that just makes sense, uh, for him to get scar ooh, and amplifier. Meanwhile, Roderick Langui wishes for us to capture and occupy Slanhua Peck. Fair enough, that's the direction we want to head to uh, soon anyway. Ooh, a dilemma offers a choice between powerful rewards. Fair enough. He's a cold-blooded killer a true survivor. Let's see his uh, details a little bit. So he's all the way over here, of course, right next to... You know what? I should have moved first is what I should have done. But let's go ahead and take a look. He can assault garrison. He can assassinate. He can assault units. So maybe I can use him... While, while we're waiting for a slot to open up in this army, I can maybe use him to assault the, uh, the garrison a little bit. But let's go ahead and take a look at your details over here. Anti-large. Fair enough. Fair enough. He's not the most impressive. He's decent in melee, I suppose. If I can get him some good equipment, he'll be alright, I suppose. Spread public order. Hmm. Wouldn't mind that. He's also got the guardian trait, though. So that's where he... I mean, hey, that makes sense. Uh, but that's where he comes, I think, in handy, especially, is, is to get that uh, physical resistance on nearby lords and heroes. Uh, either way, either way, either way. Uh, can we get all the way here? We can. I wonder if we send him forth to scout first. I do love that he can spread public order. I'm wondering if I want to use him for that a little bit. Um, just to keep people happy. Ah, uh, Skaven corruption over here is becoming a problem as well. But hey, at least the Skaven corruption is, is reducing the vampire corruption. <laughs> oh my god. Gotta take care of the, the Skaven problem. Alright, let's go ahead and pull Ubil back up this way, because I want to get him back up to the Scorpion Coast. Keep him on the border, basically, I think, between these two spots. Alright, that's that taken care of. Let's go ahead and get Buddy, Rodrik, moving up to there. Assault the Garrison. Yes. Failure. Wow. Off to a fantastic start. So much for being legendary. Uh, not that much of a Garrison over here, but we will have to wait a couple of turns, unfortunately, uh, to get, like, towers and stuff done. I don't know how much we can wait is the thing as well with those two armies up there. That's the scary part. That's the scary part. Uh, but let's go ahead and at Wolfart's Landing, go ahead and build this upgrade. I've been saving up for that, so might as well do that now. And let's go ahead and get this army... What am I thinking? All the way up to here and then an ambush stance, perhaps? The reason why I'm thinking ambush stance is because... Well, first of all, let's get you up to here for sure. Right? Keep you on our side so we can keep replenishing. Get you into ambush, because what I want to do is I want to convince these guys that I am not down here, and that they can stay focused on the New World colonies, and hopefully they'll crush their skulls against the walls of Swamp Town or Port Reaver or something, and the next turn we can hit Spectazuma. I think that would go well for us. And hopefully we won't fail at assaulting the garrison next time. Because honestly, come on guys. Oh god, negative two down over here. Rebellions are right around the corner. Rebellions are right around the corner. Well, that's the turn, I believe. We've done quite well for ourselves. The claim is still on the rise. 
at that end turn. One, oh, honestly, once I get spec to Zuma, we're able to take advantage of the gemstones. That should give us a pretty penny. Yeah, that's the turn. Feeling so out of... Just feeling out of position. Feeling constantly out of position in this campaign. That's the thing. It's like there's a thrill to that difficulty, right? There's a certain amount of, like, heart racing that comes with it. But then at times when it's silly um, invitations to war, that thrill turns to just <laughs> exasperated sighs, I suppose. But we're okay. I feel like we've turned things around. Many of you have been saying as well that you've been facing similar situations where uh, uh, those, those first, you know, 30 to 40 turns or so have been painful. Uh, but then once the momentum... Eh, that's what these games... That's what the Total War games always are. Once you gain the momentum, it becomes a snowball effect. It is a snowball effect. Now, it's starting to bother me a little bit that our friends are not pushing down south. And it looks like they these guys are coming down south, so that's a problem. Yes. I'm almost wondering if I want to attack and assault. My arrow flies true. Hmm. Would have been nice if Buddy was here, because he can damage walls. It would have been nice. Unfortunately, it's not the case. How is... How are you... It's gonna pop on into Flaxland for a second. Oh no, we, we are we're, we're we're in Flax. Sorry, hold on. Um, just I feel like there's a Undercity or something. Unless I guess there's some Skaven holds. Like this might be a Skaven hold or something. Fair enough. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out which way I want to go here. Let's go ahead, well, let's stick to the original plan. Let's get you right to the edge, or let's pass you over into the Scorpion Coast. Right, fight the corruption over here. Because if we can drop this quickly enough, that'd be very helpful. That'd be very helpful if we can reduce it, and then we can start ignoring the Scorpion Coast corruption problem for a little bit. Then we can focus on Flaxland. Okay, fair enough. Now down over here, how do we want to play this? I could try and catch that army out of position uh, and ambush it. Or I could move in here, attack, and if they poke forward, then I could get into a position to uh, ambush them. Sure. Sure. Let's go ahead and assault the garrison first. Please. Please succeed. Ma'am. Honestly, <gasps> this game sometimes, a critical failure on one of these legendary hunters. Take some time to recover. Fantastic. Beautiful. Beautiful. How much time? Five turns. They should at least be faster to come back, I think. That's just, that's goofy as hell, if I'm honest. Alright, to Spectazuma we go. Um, wow, that's heavily in our favor. You know what, let's just get a battering ram done. It'll take a turn, and then maybe we can actually uh, auto-resolve this. Continue the siege. I, I cannot get over what I just witnessed there. <laughs> that just should not have happened. <laughs> Five turns. Five turns. What a goof. What an absolute goof. Let's go ahead and demolish this. We'll get that money to upgrade this over here. Meanwhile, we'll go ahead and build this maybe next turn or so as well. Again, we're not going to be recruiting anytime soon. Or so I believe. So I'm fine with that not being uh, available. And I believe that's the turn. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. I just... I'm, I'm, I can't get over the fact that he just crit failed on assaulting a garrison. A garrison that we're going to handily defeat as well. That's what I get for trying to be cheeky. That's what I get for trying to be cheeky. We all pay the price for our hubris. Especially Bretonians. Ah. Uh. <sighs> Alright, let's see. Are you gonna get aggressive here? Kind of. Yeah, they're doing their silly little dance again. I, I could have sworn they said they were moving in to enemy territory, but perhaps not. Looks like they're 
at least they're keeping them busy. It looks like it was a recruitment cycling going on over there between buildings that are available and not. So that's one thing. Ooh, famine in the Empire. Many of the Empire's best hunters are employed by your expedition. This has caused a problem back home in the provinces, where the paucity of good hunters has resulted in an explosion in the deer population. The prolifically multiplying herbivores have been feeding on pastures used by livestock farmers, in turn affecting food supplies in villages and cities that traditionally depend on animal husbandry for food. The pockets of famine have also caused disease outbreaks, which are threatening to get worse. You are contacted separately by the electors of Reichland, Ostermark, and Sterling, who seek your backing on their chosen course of action. Which suggestion will you support? The obvious suggestion is to get a bunch of machine guns and gun down the deer. Never have hu humans ever lost a war against animals when we went in with machine guns. Right, guys? Ten points if you get, get the reference. Okay, so the favor of Ostermark for... I don't really want to divert supplies. Heightened tensions. I. Oh, Okay, well, here's the thing. Uh, either way, we're about to get heightened tensions, right? Let's be honest. Uh, once we take Spectazuma, Specta, Spectazuna, Zuma, I forget the name. Who cares? We're going to change it anyway. Uh, once we get that, we're going to trigger the Lizardmen anyway. Um, so we might as well spread propaganda and not lose out on growth and replenishment because we're going to do this anyway. We're, we're going we're gonna to increase hostility anyway. So, fine. The Elector of Sterling wants to strengthen the Empire's political position to help uphold morale back home, which will rile up your enemies across the world. You know what? Rile them up. <sighs> the Lizardmen retaliate. Imperial supplies ready. Okay, let's go ahead and figure this out. Um, advanced infantry reinforcements, halberdiers, huntsmen, and greatswords. Those huntsmen, though. Uh, knightly orders, advanced cavalry, two Reichsguard, one demigriff knights. Ooh... Advanced war machine, two war wagons with mortars, and a steam tank. Oh, okay, that seems like the obvious option. Right? I'm not crazy, right? We want a steam tank out on the field, right? Or advanced artillery. We had a great cannon, Hellstorm rocket battery, outriders with grenade launchers. Nice, compelling, intriguing, but not a steam tank. And wasn't I just talking about war wagons with mortars? Let's get this done. Yeah, this won't supplement a second army as easily with, like, frontline equipment and stuff, but, like I said, we're about to be able to recruit our own greatswords and stuff, so sure, let's go with the Imperial Engineers there. Okay, where are they going to come in from? I'm down over here. That means they're moving towards Flaxland, of course. Can I raise an army here in time? How long will it take? Which way do they have to go? I might take them a fair bit of time. One, two, maybe three turns to get up here. So we could recruit an army and work at a deficit. Blacksland has a garrison, so there's that. This is maybe, hopefully, also a bunch of skinks, but let's not forget. They're unbreakable, right? They're unbreakable. I've got your backs. If I take Spectazuma here and then I force march back, I might be able to make it to Flaxland before they're able to assault. Which is not bad. Unfortunately, it opens us up for these guys to come down south, but I don't think they will. It looks like the New World Colonies are doing a good job in keeping them occupied up there. I desperately need a second army, don't I? Desperately need a second army. Uh, corruption over here is dropping fairly swiftly, so that feels good as well. Uh, Flaxland, we can't say the same about about you. Oh, you know what? Looks like the scaven corruption has stopped. Maybe someone was uh, just sneaking around down here like an agent or something. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Let's focus on our next conquest over here. After all, that is why we allowed ourselves to become condemned. Let's dive on into Spectazuma. I will auto-resolve this. I'm not in a position to lose any of these troops. This is heavily in our favor. Uh, might as well just auto-resolve. Right? Yeah. Okay, I was so worried we were going to do something. Decisive victory, beautiful, lost only 240, got some money off of it. Simply going to occupy. Simply going to occupy, yep. Alara has got a ferryman for a campaign line of sight buff. Warrior Bane, passive ability, reduced weapon damage for enemies in the area, okay. Magic guy, okay, you know what, hold on. Warrior Bane looks like something we could give Yorick Grimm.
Reduced weapon damage for enemies in range. How likely am I to throw Buddy into melee? Well, I don't want to... I don't want to take Dawn away, obviously. It's a unique item. Tormentor Sword I really like. So, you know what? Yeah, Yorick Grim, you're going to go ahead and take the Warrior Bane. Um, sword there. And anything else we want to get you? No, nothing else we need over here. Fair enough. Fair enough. Everyone's leveled up over here. That's good. Replenishment won't take very long. That's good as well. And hopefully we can get back to Flaxland quickly. Uh, we are able to level the settlement up four turns. It will take, however, I do think it's not going to take these guys four turns to get up to here. So we're not going to risk that just in case. We're not going to risk that. Snide's head, we could upgrade you. Well, let's go ahead and get this going first. Right? We've learned our lessons. Right? Uh, let's go ahead and upgrade you as well so we're making more money. And up over here... I don't need one of these everywhere. I would very much like to get... Ooh, Imperial Academy. Um... Spec to zoom. Mm, oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Mm, I'm thinking we replace this rally field. We'll get it here soon enough. 2,000 it'll cost, so in the next couple turns we'll get the rally field happening over here. Uh, while over here, this is the only place we can get gemstones. So let's go ahead and demolish this. Right, we'll replace it. We'll get some money off of the rally field demolishing being demolished as well. Use that money to upgrade some of these structures over here. Yep, yep, yep. And then eventually we'll get walls and stuff over here. Feeling pretty good about our progress so far, but I'm a little worried because we have to rush over to Flaxland now to defend it. I'm also wondering if I want to merge any of these units together to recruit a steam tank. Because, <laughs> let's be honest, it's a steam tank. Where is it? Hold on. Uh, steam tank, steam tank. It's a regular steam tank. It's not the crazy one. I mean, hell yeah, right? We could merge these spears together and then let the remainder go on into this rank 3 unit of spears. Get a steam tank in here. Be nigh undefeatable. Well, let's go ahead and level these guys up first. Um, got pistol core all the way. We got best of the best. I'm wondering if we go with Master Survivalist. Perhaps isn't a bad idea right now. That extra campaign movement range could make all the difference in the world in getting back to Flaxland in time. All the difference in the world. That missile damage bump. There's all, these. These are all really good, which is why I wanted to get. Uh, uh, best of the best ASAP. Telescopic aim is also ridiculously good. Let's go with Master Survivalist. Extra movement range. Line of sight, whatever. Casualty replenishment rate sounds excellent as well, because then if we come down here, and if we, you know, take a bit of a beating, at least we can loop back around and uh, come back a little bit faster. Kalara, you've leveled up as well. Let's go ahead and get you, what, another set of uh, piercing shots, I think? Hmm... Yeah. Yeah, let's go with another step of piercing shots. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if I want to get spread public order for all these people. Uh, and over here, let's go ahead and get you... Increased mobility also sounds like a good idea right now. Yeah, let's do it. Rather than a reload time reduction for all missile units, that's huge. Ah, we're moving fast enough. Let's go with standardized firing drills. Let's do it. Marcus. We should be able to get there quickly enough. The question remains. The steam tank. Shall we? Should we? Shouldn't we? Do we want to get rid of spears in order to get a steam tank in here? Because anti-large is something we have to think about, right? And, and some of you suggested actually getting a second army in which I can offload some of these units so that we're not getting rid of, uh, you know, requisitioned units. Yeah, I guess we could merge some of these spearmen. Make room for a steam tank. Because it would be awesome. Rule of cool, right? Rule Marcus of cool, let's do it. Wolfhart. Marcus Wolfhart. Don't lower their rank too much, please. Okay, that works for me. Go ahead and get the steam tank out. It's expensive. 
That maintenance cost is pricey. Yeah, let's do it. Hell yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, hero not moved. What are we talking about? Ubel, I think you're fine where you are. Yeah, keep dropping corruption over here. Uh, we might want to... Let's see, what are, what are his abilities? He can assassinate. He can block army. I mean, we can slow these guys' roll a little bit if I need to. It doesn't feel like I do just quite yet, so we're fine. Flaxland, we're not doing anything over here just yet. We don't want to invest any money um, where when it might get lost. But eventually, I'll, I'll figure out what I want to replace this with. Because again, Snide's Head and uh, Temple of Sigmar is where we're going to build the recruiting uh, options here. The the blacksmith as well as the, or rather the armory as well as the barracks. Now oh, we'll figure it out. I believe that's the turn. Oh, here not moved. Well, skip that. That is the turn. Let's see what the AI does here. Really worried about this situation. Okay, let's see. It's unfortunate too because now is the time to take even more settlements because their uh, aggression level, the hostility level, isn't going to go any higher. It's already maxed out, so now's the time to do it. But, obviously we can't. Obviously we can't. I'd like to take the High Sentinel and a little Ruins up there as well. But again, hopefully it'll take those guys long enough to get up over here. Hopefully the New World Colonies are going to... Nope. I was going to say stay aggressive, but I guess that's not what they're thinking right now. That wasn't too bad. The Blue Vipers, what are you going to do? Got one and a half stacks over there. These guys being at war with me is just unfortunate. Oh, no, no, I wanted to see what they did. It's fine. Colonial Factors has been researched. A little bit of extra money from trade. Not the best, but we only needed that for um, the Clergy of Sigmar here. For Untainted plus two faction wide. Yep. Cool. Excuse me. Um, where did you go? <laughs> All right, here's what I'm thinking. Over here, you know what? We've done all right. Now let's go ahead and pull down a little bit. Just want to see if we can't see... Step to it. There we go. Sick so if they force march, they can reach us. Remember, this entire army is unbreakable. Lots of Pterodon Riders, lots of Skin Cohort with Javelins, Skin Cohorts, and the Red Crested Skinks. Okay. We okay. should be able to rush back in two turns? Question mark? Three. God damn it, three turns. That's scary. That's scary. Sigma. This is okay. I think they're going to be held in place. The this, falls. though. It'll take them two turns to hit Flaxland. Um, we can block army next turn, but it's not going to make a difference. No one to assassinate. We can assault these guys a little bit, I guess. No. All we can do is block army, but they'll be too close for us to do anything at that time. Now, Flaxland, again, has walls. It's got a bit of a garrison, so it can put up a fight on its own. Maybe it can stand on its own, actually. Maybe I'm being a little too worried. Uh, maybe I'm being a little too scared. And we can actually, if we don't rush back, we can move up towards the High Sentinel right now. Uh, get aggressive over here while also holding these guys back. Now, they're unbreakable. Let's see, what do we want here? We've got a fair bit of range. We've got some cavalry. We've got swords and spears. Apart from those Sora Spears being terrifying, we should be okay. And I could actually, if I wanted to, we could recruit a new army here. Right? One turn would be getting the, uh, the general, and that would be basically all of our money. And then the next turn would be using the Regiments of Renown and, uh, and Imperial Supplies. Not that we can afford that many, <laughs> but the Imperial Supplies, though, we can get both of the War Wagons, and that would be huge. Two War Wagons uh, with mortars firing away from behind the protection of the walls of Flaxland. That could be pretty huge. That could actually be all we need uh, to throw these, uh, to throw these, what, children of the Old Ones back. Hmm, tempting. At the same time, what are these upgrades we have available? Spectazuma, let's go ahead and get this going over here. Well, hold on, no, 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 sorry. Ooh. Go with this first. That still gives us enough money to recruit. 
at least a lord over here. I'm thinking that might be what I want to do. Even if it's a small secondary army. Alternatively, I cancel the, the construction of this gem mine shaft. It's nice to at least see our economy is finally getting to a bit of a sustainable position. I could also cancel the construction of the tall walls. And yes, we will have lost a lot of progress and wasted a lot of time, but it would allow us to recruit a better garrison over here, which ultimately will make up the lost time because that means this army doesn't have to come back. Yeah, hmm. You know what's a load of crap as well is if we had Rodrik Langui, then he could join this army that we're planning on raising over here and, and help us. Because again, he's anti-large. Uh, not anti-large, isn't going like, to make that much of a difference. A couple of Pterodon riders will shoot them down with the crossbows early on anyway. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Three turns to get back. We can get back in time, but it's more about do I want to abandon this front? You know what, folks? It's something I have to think about. And it's something that, as I often like to do, uh, I'm going to turn to you guys about. Let me know what you think I should do. Should I stay over here, raise another army at Flaxland, try to hold it with that secondary smaller army made of regiments of renown and imperial supplies units, uh, hold back the children of the old ones using that army, and at the same time get aggressive with Marcus Wolfhart, take the High Sentinel, uh, take the Monument of the Moon while hostility is already maxed out, turn back around, get the Floating Pyramid, and then finally turn our attention uh, to the Vampire Coast Mutineers and Slanhuapek. What do you guys want to see? Again, uh, I'm asking because I want to see your opinions and your thoughts in the comments down below. I might not necessarily do what you guys are suggesting if I feel strongly uh, in a different way, but it's always uh, good to know what you guys want to see because then I can I can try and pull off some of the challenging ideas uh, You know, if I think they're even remotely viable. But folks, don't forget to leave a name down below for Spectazuma and for Ubil over here. They definitely need some names. And some high-performing units uh, deserve some new names down here as well. I'll be implementing them next session. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always, if you did, you know what to do. Leave those likes and comments down below. A massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. You keep us alive and running smoothly. And a big ol' thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.